if you're able to overcome prison, jail, streets, or whatever, that experience in itself is so rich. And we, 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 we taught like it doesn't mean anything, but it's so valuable. If anybody could grow up in the streets, maneuver, like understand this game or know how to make some money or, you know, understand this, it, 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 that's a system in itself, right? Academia is a system in itself too. So I feel like we could learn this thing. We could also learn this. I always wanted to come to Berkeley. This is one of the most prestigious uh, universities in the world. I came here, did my undergraduate here, got my master's here. Now I'm starting the PhD program. I don't think I really understood what it means to be at a research institution. I thought you came to class, you get a good, a good grade, you get a, a degree from this place, and it's like, you hold it up, and it's like, it's gonna do away with all my past, and all. that's kind of how I thought of it. Um, I've come to understand that this place is a place where you can actually find your passion. What am I into? I'm into boxing. So I'm going to do, I'm going to get a master's and write a paper on boxing. I'm into understanding what created mass incarceration. So guess what? That's what I'm studying for my PhD. You can do that here. And if you take it high enough, if, 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 you, if you take it all the way, you finish your doctorate, you publish stuff, you can actually start to change the conversation. Graduate student instructor holds sections so they don't lecture in the main lecture class. You meet separately from the lecture on a separate day or a separate time. Okay. Any more questions about the third module before we kind of get in groups? Nancy, then. Okay, yeah. One more. My experience with the carceral state changes my relationship to the material and makes it so that it informs the way I teach and the way I engage with the material. But let's do a little check-in first. Terminology. I love to police terminology, pardon the pun, but ex-offender, ex-felon. I would ask that people start using formerly incarcerated person humanizes the subject rather than placing a label on them. I know this is in the reading. I'm a female. I'm black. I lived in the ghettos. And I'm in academia. So I bring all those different aspects to academia. I add that intersectionality to the campus, you know, because somebody from a privileged background can't tell a story like how I can because I lived it firsthand. Well, this class is my, it was my honors thesis class. Honors thesis is research. Like, basically, it's something that you want to research and you write about. You're working on whatever topic, and there needs to be a good sociological project research. I think it's important for me to do something that's close to home. I'm working on domestic violence and the black woman's paradox and why women choose not to call the police. Growing up in East Oakland, it was a little rough depending on where you lived. <laughs> you you didn't want to walk through certain neighborhoods. This is my old apartment building. You know, I had my dreams when I was a kid, but I pretty much gave those up when I got to a certain age. It was like, you know, I pretty much like it's all about, see my mom taught me that. My mom says it's all about hustling. She was like, fuck school, it's about hustling. You gotta get it how you get it. 
My dad used to always tell me I'm not the prettiest girl, so don't think I am, you know. My low self-esteem came from my household and from my parents always telling me I ain't shit. That became internalized. And that's why I always wanted people to accept me at school. And that's why it hurt when people I used to get teased all the time. I was the like the I was always the butt of the joke and I was always teased and I was always talked about. You know, and then on top of that I was poor and my parents were on drugs, so I didn't have the best. So I got teased about that too. This is where I got arrested. Right there. Next thing I heard a freeze and the police hopped the fence and I tried to throw the weed. I threw the weed under the car and I went to jail. I thought it was cool, actually. You know, everybody like, you know, you, you know, you seem tough if you go to jail, you know? So I thought it was, I thought it was kind of cool, like, to go to jail. I was scared because I didn't know what to expect, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm smiling like, I'll be back. Which was crazy. Right now, we are headed to my uh, class on the economics of race. There's like a lot of sort of debate around, you know, why blacks or African Americans haven't been, you know, in a position for upward mobility compared to, you know, other ethnicities and race. So what this class is going to do is like break it down in terms of like economics. The police departments that are that are patrolling uh, African American kids disproportionately, given that there are differences in people where they live, are treating crimes in this range, right, of severity where there's discretion differently than the police departments that are patrolling predominantly white cities, right? And so it's not necessarily. I'm from South Berkeley. Also, I had a pretty good childhood, or. At least I would like to think that, but there's a lot of things that I wasn't aware of when I was a kid that, you know, weren't considered okay. We are on Harmon Street, the 1500 block. Um, this is where I spent a lot of my time, my childhood. Basketball was like what, what kept me away from the streets a lot because like I was like, okay, if I'm gonna go to the NBA, like I can't be smoking, I can't be out here getting in trouble. Once that dream sort of went out the window, I just started selling drugs. This whole street right here is known for like some of the drug trafficking that happens in Berkeley. I've seen some, you know, there've been some bad things that happened right here. People have been shot over here by the store, even killed knowing how cold and mean these streets can be and the decisions you can make and how you end up. Like a lot of my friends are in prison, jail. Uh, a lot of them are, you know, at the, at the cemetery. I'm hurt right now because this is a set, very same bus stop where me and my sister used to come here every morning. Me and Sierra, we used to come here and catch the bus to school. And she's not here no more, you know? The, the, the community, the gun violence, like, it's real. And I need to use my voice, experience, and position to, to do something about it, you know? I gotta be accountable to this neighborhood. Not just this neighborhood, but all the neighborhoods that are similar, you know? Who didn't get their paper or still hasn't gotten paper number one? What I do with the underground scholars, I help formerly incarcerated transfer students and those impacted by mass incarceration try to transfer to UC Berkeley. Okay, last questions or otherwise? All right, I'll see you all next week. We encourage them to come take a class here at UC Berkeley while they're still at community college, which is what our cross enrollment program is built on.
I think it's great to have the opportunity to have our students in the cross enrollment class that I'm the graduate student instructor for. I'm not an easy grader. I go tough on them. <laughs> They'll tell you <laughs> I'm tough. Where's my green pen? Because actually I can grade it right now. I'm going to go hard on you guys because yeah. this is, uh, I want you guys to really progress to the next level. I want you to be like a UC writer by the time you get here. Um, and you're well on your way. We set aside a separate hour just for our students to really make sure that they're getting the concepts. Nice, very good. This is great. You need people to, that understand where you're coming from, that walk like you, talk like you, uh, to help you make it through this process. I feel like that's a big part of it. Um, this can be a scary place. Higher education can be a scary place. And so we need to support each other, and it's important to have those kind of support networks. He was far from an average student. However, here's a good however right here. What are you trying to say in this paragraph? Um, I go down to the conversation he had with his teacher. Okay. So, even though he was a great student, mm -hmm. what? So it's based, what, um, he still got treated, I mean. Why? He didn't mean that because of the color of his skin. Okay, say that. Okay. That's a great topic sentence. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's all you need to do. Your writing has evolved in ways that I'm very happy with over this semester. Yay. Don't you feel like? I think our most successful thing is we hire a current formerly incarcerated community college student to do outreach at their campus. And then the idea is they are also getting ready to transfer here themselves. I started getting involved in gangs in eighth grade. It was very violent. I mean, I had to carry a gun to school a couple of times. By then they did like a home invasions on my friend's house. A couple of us got stabbed. Um, two of my friends had died by then. Just to go to school was like life or death, so I decided to not go the last couple of months, so I actually didn't graduate from high school. If I never got incarcerated, I wouldn't have been in this path. It made me really change my perspective, I think, the most. My plan right now is to transfer out to a four-year university. My top choice is at Berkeley because I already have developed relationships with um, an org there called the Underground Scholars Initiative. What I, what I think is, would be a useful thing to do now is to shift over to New Jim Crow for a little bit. I reached out to him, I was like, hey, how's this application process, how does it work? It actually got me a sit-down meeting with an uh, admissions counselor where they uh, overread my personal statement and um, they gave me feedback on it. So it actually made me a stronger candidate. What's this book about? Mass incarceration. Mass incarceration. Mass incarceration, she's saying you don't know. It's not about justice or fairness or making sure people are safe taking drug, bad drug dealers off the streets, it's not really about those things, she's saying. Her argument is, it's really about taking away people's civil rights. So I want to work with uh, people that have been previously incarcerated. The way my education will help me with that is, even though I come from this background, have lived experience, and I have all this knowledge about it, I came to understanding that without a degree, a diploma, or higher education, no one is willing to hear me out. The last time I was in jail, I had decided like I had had enough, I had my last drink. I started to, to see myself in a different light. I did my time differently. Someone was like, you seem like someone that has a lot of potential as a student. And, and it fundamentally changed the way that I came home. I didn't know that all these barriers I would soon come to face once I was released. It was hard. I didn't, you know, know what it was I wanted to do. I just know that they couldn't take me back to prison if I went to school. I couldn't be violated. Also, I knew that, you know, something good had to come out of going to school. I didn't know, like, you know, what the possibilities were. Giving birth in jail made me never, ever want to go back to jail. But having a felony on my record, it's not that easy just changing over your life. Going back to school was the best decision I made post-incarceration. 
getting my life together and getting educated. Like without education, you just don't know what you don't, you know, you just don't know what you're missing. I remember I got the email and um, I didn't open it the first day. I opened it the second day because I was just curious because people were like, hey, did you get in or not? And I was like, now nah, I'm going to wait to open it. And I was like, oh, fuck, I'm just going to open it. I just couldn't wait. When I seen congratulations, I didn't even read the rest. It just said congratulations. The first word, I was like, I got in, you know? Like, it was uh, overwhelming, like, happiness and excitement. I made it, you know? I made it to where I wanted to be, where I didn't ever think was possible for me to be. The biggest change from community college to Berkeley has been the whole academic setting is more rigorous. There's more reading. Critical ethnic studies scholars want to shift the perspective of who counts as a knower from this kind of all-knowing bird's eye view perspective um, to the position from which those who have historically been marginalized and excluded see and understand the world and how it operates. And in other words, the oppressed become the knowers. USI as a group that helps me like educationally. They tell me to study when they see me slacking. It's not just uh, in the school, but outside of school, like they're my homies. Like I've made personal relationships with a lot of them. You know, it's like even when we're out of school, we're still gonna be connected. We're still gonna talk to each other, and we're gonna keep working with each other. Have you sign in first? It's our second annual Transfer Empowerment Day. We have about 100 community college students from all over the state, uh, potential transfers to the UC system. All of the resources that, that we help students with, we're going to try to model today. If you want to apply to post-grad, uh, like BA, if you want a fellowship, scholarships, like we support you through all that. We just help you thrive and succeed while you're here at Cal. Not just to get your BA, but get you ready to think like, okay, you're here, now what's next? And actually, on that note, we have a, a first student who got into UC Berkeley this fall who's still currently incarcerated. Yeah. So... I was selling drugs, I was gang banging, because that's what I had to do to survive where I'm from. That's why I'm back in school, to get rid of these barriers that shouldn't exist for our populations. Because, like, the privileged kids and the ones that have everything handed to them, like, when they're growing up, they're thinking, what university do I want to go to? You know what I'm saying? <coughs> Shit, I was thinking, like, I'm not going to make it to 18. Like, so we got different... Four, four, ones, we're going to start heading out. Know, I'm yeah. leading the tour, along with Shalita. We're going to take you to the important places on campus. You know, that's a regular tour. Four, we put this on every year so we can gather formerly incarcerated students, so we can give inspiration and hope that, look, hey, we're formerly incarcerated system impacted students, and we're here at UC Berkeley getting a higher education, and we're being successful. So we're going to go down, um, see our, we're going to see our office, and then we're going to come back up. A lot of people are under the assumption, like, hey, I can't go to that prestigious college because I can't afford to go. Berkeley is very affordable. If you make under $80,000 a year, they pay for your tuition. Because if Berkeley accepts you, they want you. I'm for seeing our people as academics, for seeing our people as able to access and take opportunities through higher education. Enroll in community college, get your feet wet, try to do well. It's difficult, but it's not impossible. Serving time requires tremendous discipline and humility, but those skills are transferable. They would definitely serve a person well in academia. We're not just criminals. We might have made some bad mistakes in the past, but it doesn't define who we are.
It's hard to envision a future when you're locked up and you don't know what tomorrow holds. Thinking about, hey, maybe once you're released, you could be in Berkeley. It might be far-fetched, but it really isn't. I'm not just here for me, you know, it's bigger than me, it's bigger than my family, you know, it's about my community, it's about the people I left back behind in prison. When you give people like us an opportunity, we can become better, more effective leaders. Are there going to be uncomfortable situations? Are people going to discriminate against us? Yes, absolutely. The more we fight against that and the more we say, hey, look at me, I'm formerly incarcerated. I'm a doctoral student. You want to discriminate against me because the kind of person you think I am because of a moral judgment that you have about formerly incarcerated people, then it's my duty to change your mind.